Hello friends, Mandar here. I am back with another video. Today let's talk about why EB priority dates might not move very fast in the upcoming years. We'll also talk about the 5 year extensions that people are getting for EAD and AP cards. What particular category that they are getting in and some questions related to that. And we'll also talk about the numbers that USCIS has published and what can we make out of it in terms of movement of the dates for EB category. So some important topics guys. Watch this video until the end and let's get started. If you are here for the first time, welcome. My name is Bandar and I make immigration and lifestyle related videos for US and Canada. I'm not an immigration lawyer, so anything that I say on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs before you take any action, you should hire a competent immigration lawyer. If you want to talk to me, do contact me on my Calendly. There you can set up some time with me and I can give you my perspective regarding your situation. Now that will be a non-legal advice, but before you do anything on your case, do seek the help of an immigration lawyer. Also do check out the links in the description because those are affiliate links and you might find something interesting and that will also help the channel. Also while you are down there, do hit the like button. In my last video, I had started a new giveaway for an Apple Watch Series 9. So if you want to win that, do hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and leave a meaningful comment. Now let's look at the first topic of the day. Now let's clarify some questions regarding the 5 year extensions that people are getting for EAD and AP. And yes, we have got confirmation from few people that they are getting EAD extension for 5 years. Not only that, some people who have applied for advanced parole card, they are also getting the extension for 5 years, which is amazing. I was not really expecting the 5 year extension for advanced parole. Now there was a lot of confusion regarding this. Many people who are on H4 EAD did contact me and say, can I apply for the EAD extension and will I get 5 years extension? Now as far as I can tell you, this does not apply to H4 EAD cases and the reason is the H4 EAD is dependent on the H4 and H4 is dependent on the underlying H1. So if the H1 validity is only for a year or two or three, that is the validity you are get, going to get for your EAD card that is based on your H4 EAD. So no, this five year extension rule does not apply for H4 EAD. Now this applies for adjustment of status related uh, EADs. Now it wasn't formally published, but we have seen that employment based adjustment of status applicants started getting five year extensions on their EAD starting 1st of October. Not only that, some people who applied for AP extension, which is advanced parole extension, they also got for five years. Not all of them, although I might add, because there are some people who reported that they got their EADs after 1st of uh, October and that came in at two years extension. So it's, it seems like they are not consistent or at least the practice has, has yet to catch up with all the visa officers. Now another interesting question was, I just got my EAD extended for two years. Can I apply for an extension one more time just to get five year extension? I would highly discourage you to do that because your EAD applica application might get rejected. It is best to apply six months before your expiry of your EAD and AP card to get the extension. So if you have just recently received an extension, but for lesser time, say two years, you might want to wait until six months of expiry of that and then apply for your uh, extension to get five year extension. Now this rule of five year extension is not going to go anywhere. They just implemented it and I'm going to assume that it's here to stay. So don't worry about your extensions. Don't worry about applying for extensions immediately after you have got a recent extension. Now there are many questions that I get regarding EB category date forward moment. Now we saw that the dates went forward for EB2 and EB3 India specifically by one full year or almost approximately one year. Now in my last couple of videos I was saying that the dates will continue to move forward by one year at a time for the next two years until December of 2014. My logic was based on some number crunching and number calculation. I'm going to share you what my thoughts were and it might not be a rosy garden, but I am optimistic and I want to give you my perspective. So now this is the data for service wide forms by quarter 
from April 1st of 2023 to June 30th of 2023. So three months data, which is quarter three of uh, 2023, FY 2023. Now I am interested in this line at the bottom, which says employment based immigration. Application to register for permanent residence or adjustment of status for employment. Now this here you can see quarter three numbers and year to date fiscal numbers. Okay. So now what is interesting here is the forms received during the quarter three, which is from April to the end of June, were 24,580. Approved petitions were 31,920. So they are actually processing more applications than they received, which obviously means that there are pending applications that they are also going, uh, going through. Now the processing time is seven months, uh, seven, 7.6 months, which is lesser compared to other categories as you can see. Now the pending total pending year to date applications in EB category is 189,295. Now what I'm going to say is let's look, let's compare this data with the previous year. Now this is the, now these are the numbers from April 20, uh, April 1st of 2022, which was last year to June 30th of 2022. So exactly the same uh, time period last year. Now if you look at this, Forms received during that quarter were 47,366. Now granted the dates were much further progressed. So more people were um, applicable or more people were eligible to apply for 485. But the forms um, submitted were significantly higher. And they also processed at a higher rate. Now at the time last year during this quarter, the pending applications were 244,000. Now there was an article that came out in on the Twitter which said that the number of pending applicants for EB2 India as of September 30th was 41,405. Now if you do a simple math, last year if the numbers were 244k, India EB2 numbers were 41k. So if we apply the same proportion out of the 18, 189k pending for India as of end of September, EB2 would be approximately 31k. So it will be 10,000 less pending applicants for EB2 India. So we have approximately 3000 per country. So if you calculate by that, by linear progression, it might take 10 years, you would say. But consider this, I think because all visas were used up in quarter four, and because we had 57k spillovers, the spending number in EB2 India is much lesser. Let's say 15K came to India, then this number comes down from 31K to 10 or 12,000. That is my expectation. Now, which is probably three to four years away, right? So if you if you divide 10 to 12K by 3, 3K, it's about three to 4K of pending inventory. So it will, so to, to clear the backlog, it will take three to four years. But if we consider people upgrading from EB, EB2 to EB1, that number is going to go down and uh, and then the date progression might become faster, which is within two years. That was my logic when I said for the dates for EB2 and EB3 will progress by one year or approximately one year for the next two years up until 2014 December. How did you come up with this speculation? And this is my speculation. Now you can put down in the comment section below whether, whether you agree or disagree with my assessment. I'm happy to be wrong or right. Either ways is fine with me. If you have a logical explanation that will counter my argument, I'm happy to listen to it. So put down in the comment section below because that will also get you into the giveaway. I like the meaningful conversation in the comment section that gives a lot of information to people, including myself. So let's do that. So I know for sure that some of you are interested in stock trading, day trading, buying cryptocurrencies. I want to present you Webull. Webull is a trading platform. It allows you to buy stock. It allows you to buy options, do options trading. And also it allows you to buy cryptocurrency. Webull 9 was released with a brand new home and market page, asset page and economic calendar. Also Webull cash management was launched with 5.8% API with no fees attached and no minimum balance and unlimited withdrawals. This is amazing. New Webull USA users can still enjoy 5.8% APY and gift up to 12 free stocks when making an initial deposit of each is valued between $3 and $3,000. Feel free to take advantage of this. Join through my link and you will get those free stocks. 
Now, a lot of people are contemplating going to Canada for EB1C qualification. If you want my perspective on this, because I have talked to a lot of people in this category, I can share you anonymous experiences from these people who talk to me. And that will be really helpful if you are contemplating going to Canada or India to qualify for EB1C by, uh, by applying through the international managerial capacity or category. Also, if you want to apply for EB1A, I have some thoughts that I can share you with the real world examples. So reach out to me on Calendly if you want to chat with me. So that's really all I wanted to say in this video. If you like the content of this video, do hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.